Yep, uh-huh. Hello everyone, it's me again. Um, Michael Koppelman, and welcome to the show. We've got a show centered around one main topic today. Um, that topic is letting go, and it's gonna come up over and over. Um, and really, I'm talking about three things. In general on these things, I'm talking about three things. I, was, I might call this three things, maybe it's called three things. If it's not called three things, um, then it's still a, a, about three things. And the three things today are, um, I wrote a song with Sarah Morris, and I'm gonna talk a little about Sarah and, oh yeah, sh should I face the microphone? I'm gonna talk a little about Sarah and um, how we wrote this song together. And it goes through a lot of different byways and stuff. Um, and it's kind of related to this, you know, my the topic of letting go. Then we're going to talk about subtraction as a problem-solving tool and why human beings suck at it. Um, I shouldn't say, I'm not going to answer maybe why we suck at it, but I'm going to talk about that we do suck at it. And then I'm going to play a song. My third thing is a song, which is the song I wrote with Sarah that I'm going to talk about. And um, it's called Just Let Go. And it's, you know, just wrap it all up into this beautiful bow that Sarah sings. So let's get started. Pretend there's like some transition, like. So here's how this goes. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a songwriter and a musician and, and I'm old, I'm 58 years old. And um, I was playing up at Lutzen, Minnesota, up on the North Shore at Lutz Song, this musical festival. And um, Sarah Morris played there. I'd never heard of Sarah Morris. Uh, she's a musician from Minneapolis. But she mentioned this songwriting group where she they get prompts and um, this may be familiar to some of you. Um, and I was like, what? So Sarah Morris changed my life because she mentioned this Facebook group. That Facebook group has changed my life. I've met tons of people. I've written tons of songs. I've collaborated with people on songs. I mean, it's literally been like the best thing <clears throat> for me as a songwriter. And... I hear so many people in the group talk about that, about how um, it's just been good for them as people and good for them as songwriters. Anyway, Sarah Morris introduced me to that, for which I will be forever grateful. I just want to say overall in this, like I'm not a close friend of Sarah Morris, and I'm not trying to ride on her coattails. She's someone I admire, um, and I got a chance to write a song with her, but you know, I'm not um, her best friend or something like that. Am I, Sarah? Am I? Anyway, I think... She has perfect pitch, which is a rare thing, not vanishingly rare, but rare. I knew many, 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 many great musicians who do not have perfect pitch. I do not have perfect pitch. I think she does, meaning like if you say like sing an F, she can sing an F. <clears throat> or more importantly, she can stay on key without any reference point, which I'm going to talk about in a second. This is her website. Um... She's on Spotify, Apple Music, and stuff like that. She's got a Patreon page. I highly encourage you to check her out. Anyway, because of the singer-songwriter challenge, you know, we see each other's songs. She writes in that. And um, she'd seen some of my other songs. And at some point, she um, messaged me and was like, hey, you know, in the off-season, maybe we should write a song. I was like, yeah, I'd love to. Now we'll switch threads. Like if this was a movie, we would like go to another scene. Or if it was Tolkien's book, it'd be like book two. <clears throat> which has irritated me, but anyhow, we're going to book two here. Um, I was part of this Facebook group. And I'm gonna pull it, um, goodbye Sarah Morris's page. Hopefully I got you one to two more followers and three more streams. Anywho, I, I'm interested in personal development. So I'm on medium.com and I was reading a psychologist there who's really good. Like, I really like her writing and very refreshing approach to things. And um, she has a, a Facebook group, sort of like a private Facebook group. So I was really digging her writing, and um, I, so I joined this Facebook group. And essentially it's, you know, people that you know, like her writing 
and she does a podcast and a blog and all this stuff, you know. And um, I'm sure they're fine people. The, the face group was not for me. Um, and I won't go too deep into details, but um, I sort of felt like I would be among like friends there. I don't know why I felt that. But um, so I was just kind of like my normal self, which is like pretty blunt, direct, hopefully funny and um, sometimes vulgar, you know. And it just, you know, it was just, I felt like I had no friends there. I think there were probably some friends lurking in there, but mainly it was, I was joking to myself, like these triggered, traumatized fucking people just ready to pounce on any, anything. But finally I was like, I'm fucking quitting this Facebook group, you know? So uh, I quit the Facebook group, instantly felt better. And um, you see on my screen here, I posted on Facebook. So this was February 20th of this year, 2024, if you're keeping track of things like that. And um, I said, note to self, let go of the things, let go of the things holding you down. And I was walking by the piano and I had just let go, which is like, one, two, three, do, re, mi, like, but the most simple fucking thing you can do. <clears throat> and I just sat down for a second. I was just like, just let go. And for the music nerds in there, it was, you know, it's an F, it was an F chord, the one chord, F major, F major seven, just let go. And you know, like as a songwriter, you're actually always looking for a new place to go, and there aren't any, but it doesn't stop us from looking, you know. So I went to the three major with a seven, which is not that fucking crazy because that leads to the and that's the five of D minor, which is the relative minor of F. So it's not exactly like out in left fucking field, but I was like, to me, it was like the songwriters who basically do the same thing all the time. Not that I was that blown away, believe me anyhow just like go oh, let's do that major chord with this the seven and it just came up with this little idea on the piano just like go oh, what's holding you down and um you just noodle around with it for maybe five minutes let's say and i wrote like you know seven lines of lyrics or something which are these um and just kind of, you know, exploring this idea of letting go, which is you know, well explored artistically, especially in songs. But anyhow, when's that stopped me? Um, and I kind of had this jazzy feel. I'm going to play that for you in one second. Um, in that moment, when I was sitting at the piano, I got out my voice memo app, and this is what I normally do. And I recorded this. Just let go. Of what's holding you down And your feet I'll lip sync Will leave the ground You know You don't know So just go with the flow And let it go Just let I like the dramatic foot off the pedal thing. So this is how I work, and I don't know why I work this way, but I do. You know, I spent five minutes on that. Um, it's not done. It's barely started. And I think, who should I send this to? <laughs> who, 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 who would want to? Who would get excited about this idea? And for some reason, I thought of Sarah. So I decided to send it to her, and I texted her. I, I just said. You won the Who Should I Send This Song To contest, this song idea to. And I sent her that voice memo you just heard. She's a morning person, so one morning, she sent me this. Good morning, Michael. Okay, this is what I listened to your recording, then I put the phone away and wrote and see if you like this at all. And if you hate it, just chuck it. Let's see if I remember. Just let go of what's holding you down And your feet will leave the ground A little less... And 
I'm going to play the rest of that, but in a different format in one second. So if you can see what's on the screen here, but essentially um, she was sending some lyrical ideas and was like, if you like the first verse, then the second verse could be something like this. Um, now I mentioned perfect pitch earlier. So um, I don't know the full story here, but this is you know, the way she described that. She was like, I listened to it a few times. I put away my phone and then I worked on it and now I'm going to sing it. And she did that and she sent it to me and that's what I was just playing to you. I was like, I wonder if, um, if I can play along with that. It would be really cool if I could play along with that because it was a cappella. So I got my sweet piano thing here and I play along with it and she is perfectly in tune. And I mean perfectly in tune. From the first note to the last note, she is perfectly in tune. And I don't know the last time she had listened to it with accompaniment. Most great singers I know cannot sing a song from the start to the end and be on the same absolute pitch. You know, we tend to drift, us, we human beings. She did not drift at all. I played piano against it, and it sounded like this. Let's see if I remember. Just let go of what's holding you down And your feet that's me playing along with, you know, her, her voice in my mind. A little air under your toes, arms open to the flow. Whichever way the wind will blow, yeah. I suspect you will not miss the ground. Um. Again, you'll have more chances to hear this. I mean, first of all, if you can see on my screen here, I, I said, um, also nice, perfect pitch, you amazing singer. She has perfect fucking pitch, among other things. Anyway, I mean, also because what she did with the song, you know, like I sent her this little germ of idea and, um, she basically changed the first verse, changed the chords, finished the first verse, wrote a second verse, and was like, what do you think? If you don't like it, that's fine. I was like, what do you think? It's fucking great. It's awesome. And, you know, it's it's kind of hard to know when you're collaborating, like, when to take the wheel and when not to, you know? Um, there's times that I've been working on songs with someone where I'm sort of like, okay, I got this, you know? Like, I want to finish it from here. And I couldn't tell if that's where she was. And then she ends up writing what became the chorus, what we called the B section, which was amazing. And I was like, <laughs> and um, that's when I was like, you know, if you just want to finish this, like you got this. Because she pretty much had a full song at that point. But she, but she was like, it's on the screen. You're like, no, I don't want to finish it myself. So she wanted some ideas for the third verse and she had put some parenthetical options like this or that. So I responded and I, I sort of wrote a third verse, which, um, just like the first verse, she didn't use my third verse, but she stole from it a ton. She took inspiration from it, sorry. Um, in a really cool way, like, it's funny when I read through the lyrics, like, I see tons of my little seeds in there that she that she used, but not in the way that I had used them. Um, which is just, again, a very refreshing and entertaining thing as a songwriter. So I sent her that third verse. She, again, like, took that made it something else and then she's meticulous and i am too i'm i think i'm slightly less meticulous but um like rhyming words with themselves is like something we don't do every once in a while you fucking have to do it you know but it's the sort of thing we pay attention to like we're not gonna use around twice in, in a stanza you know we're not gonna rhyme around with around and then just word choices in general and um, melodic choices and chord choices, this whole process of writing a song, like uh, um, like there's this process of, of looking a little more, looking a little harder, not, not, not being sure you're done yet. Um, and you know, she was really ex excelled at that in this, with this song, I could just see her thoughts unfold in a sense like that, you know? as she kind of refined her way through it, you know? Um, so by the end, you know, we had, I think a very, um, I mean, we do 50, 50 with everyone. I know when we write songs, we do it 50, 50, You're not going to argue about fucking shit, you know? Um, this one was pretty close to 50, 50 in ways. It, you know, it was my seed 
And then she watered it with and put sunshine on it with all her creative brilliance and energy. And then she kept kind of coming back to me for for more. And I would, you know, um, give her sort of like some more inspirations, which she would then water and grow into what became the song, which I think is a fucking brilliant song. And obviously I had something to do with it. And I'm not the most humble person on earth, you know. It's a great song. And she sings the fuck out of it. And, um, you know, I think, I hope something comes with this song. You know, she, she's a songwriter like me. She wants to sell songs to other people. She wants other people to do, her, to do her songs, just like I do. So I think we're hoping someone will do this song. Um, but we'll see. And we're back. Part one was a little long today, and we'll get right through part two here. Um, I was reading a book. I forget which book it was. Um, but it referenced a study that said that human beings are bad at using subtraction when solving problems. We tend to think additively. We want to add something. What's wrong with a situation? We want to add something, you know. In general, that's how our, our brains work. And I thought it was really interesting. <clears throat> And you see this around you, like in, in many ways, big and small, you know, but the one I think of all the time, cause I, you know, I drive a car around a city is that people always think of adding speed as a solution to problems instead of taking speed away. And that's probably cause of this egomania of like, I want to get there fast and faster than you and this contentious attitude. But it's also just that it's a misunderstanding of the tool set. I think just we, we, misunderstand how good subtraction can be as a tool for a ton of problems in your car it's it's a very good tool um to find the right you know space in this vector stream to to get what you want um like slowing down a little can be hugely advantageous to you getting there faster or whatever the fuck we think wrong we're like i want no wait i want to get there faster what are you talking about i'm not going to slow down it doesn't get me there faster that's a dumb way of thinking and we all do it at times it's fucking dumb smarter smarter is how you do better i feel this deeply you know so um i'm not gonna be able to explain why we suck at this um, I want to show you a couple things here over on camera too. <clears throat> um, this was less is more why our brains struggle to subtract. Um, I haven't watched that video. I've scanned this article. I'm going to show you the paper next, but, um, just looking at that picture, I think most people are thinking like, I can fix this. Give me one brick. Um, the, this, there's an easier solution, remove one brick, you know? It's easier because you don't need to acquire a brick. You don't have to be like, hey, where are the bricks? I, want, I, I wanna fix this, you know? Everything you have is there right now. Too much is there right now. It's a wonderful situation. Okay, let's go back to camera one. Wonderful situation <clears throat> if you can solve problems like that. You don't have to get more things. You're not reliant on anything, you know? Acquisition is sort of a reliance in a sense, you know? Um, and, you know, as a, as a producer slash songwriter, um, this comes up. Like I said, this comes up in life in general. And we've got different words for it, you know, like, um, like, like clutter. Clutter is, um, you know, old shit that's between you and new shit, you know? That's true of, so of artists and songwriters. You know, songwriters sometimes will sit and work on a song or work on recordings forever. That's prohibiting them from I think, getting their new songs, exploring their new songs, in a sense, you know? Um, as a side note, like the whole you can't polish a turd thing, I think you can polish a turd. I'm here to say you can polish a turd. It's still a fucking turd, you know? Um, and I, not, to, not that we have to call our work turds, but, um, you know, the stuff that you have to work on really hard is maybe just not the stuff you should be working on. Work on the stuff that's, that comes easier, you know, or at least keep going back into the mind and finding new things, you know? Um, so like decluttering is a concept that can work on almost any aspect of your life, you know? Um, I'll show you this paper that 
that this came from whoops wrong window um people systematically overlook subtractive changes don't you love scientists like they just said it all right there and that's their results and this is what is awesome about science one another side note this whole thing is fucking side notes um should i go to camera one for this um the abstract the abstract on that paper shows the question and the answer they do not bury the lead in science there's like here's why you should read this because we found this out and in this case they say um across eight experiments participants were less likely to identify at advantageous subtractive changes when the task did not cue them to consider subtraction and it goes on from there but um in the book i read and i believe it comes out of this paper um I believe they also discussed this in this paper. But even when people were prompted that subtraction was allowed, um, they still tended to use addition to solve all, all the puzzles until it was impossible to solve the puzzle with addition. Some people would not abandon adding things as, a, you know, as the only solution until it became clearly impossible to do with that tool. What the fuck is up with our brains that that's how we think, you know? And, you know, the reason I think about and talk about things like this is that if you're aware of this you now have a way to be smarter remember this at the right times remember it and i'm not saying i'm some fucking teacher teaching you some fucking thing i'm just saying like in in life in general this is what we're doing right so i was saying i believe emphatically and with a lot of profanity that if you remember this tool you can now be smarter um and this is our job in life is have things go better for us. You know, um, it's funny cause like the same effort can, can pay off a trillion times more when compared to effort that actually makes things worse. Well, that's when you, you know, so, um, making things a little bit better is hugely important. You know, I believe that strongly. I'm an incrementalist. Um, so um, I was about to say, like, as a songwriter and a producer, I'm always trying to think of ways to take things out, especially as a producer. And I really respect a lot of modern production. Like if you listen to um, hit songs or pop songs in particular, um, a lot of it is very minimal production. They identify what you need and they leave everything else out. I love that. Like, what, it'll just be like one guitar in the voice or like a bass sound. And this will change throughout the song, you know. But at any given time, like a great producer, a great mix engineer will really just use only the things necessary to get sh shit done right there. You've heard of like, maybe you've heard of like the wall of sound approach, which is where um, you can't really distinguish things. There's just tons of instruments all interacting. Everything has its time and place, you know. But um, I really respect... In life, in art, but specifically in music, a less is more approach in general. Like, I like a concisity in lyrics. I, you know, I like it there to be, I don't know, concisity. Concise is the only word I can really think of. Um, you know, I think like like a lot of artists, it should sort of all add up to zero in a way, or one, or whatever. But um, so to get back to just let go of this song um, with this idea. But um, there was a point where you know, where Sarah was just kind of you know, looking for any last sort of input. And I thought, well, you know, I'm me and I sort of have these ways of doing things. And she's had her, she has her ways of doing things. This is true of any sort of collaboration like this. You know, what are my things? Like what should I should make sure I kind of say, you know, that, and this came up a couple times in the song where, um, you know, she asked like about repeating the first verse. At the end, it's like, well, I fucking love doing that. I, I almost do that as a fault. So no, I have no problem repeating the first verse again, you know. Um, but also the concisity, and it didn't come out in that language, but there was a point where you know, I, I listened to it and I was like, you, know, you could you could do the course the short way the first time and the long way the second time. Because she actually had written it sort of short and then she made it long. And I, I suggested we use it twice. But I was like, hey, maybe it's short the first time. I think it worked. At least, you know, she liked the, the chorus idea and whatever. The song is what it is. But I'm just saying, like, it's kind of like always on my mind now that I've sort of became aware of this. Um, 
Like, what can you take out to make the situation better? And again, this is a hard way to think. And sometimes it's a way of thinking you have to defend, you know, like, um, why would you bring less resources to bear? It's like, cause not all resources help. You know, in general, I would say I, I really respect thinking that is not constrained, you know, there's this process of when we're deciding things and we decide a trillion things a day where you're getting the information, there's a pr- part where you're sort of processing the information and then there's a part where you make the decision, you know? And that middle step, the processing step, I think some people take as being like a given. Like that their logic is is the, is logic and therefore you don't have to spend a lot of time on the anal- analysis phase. You get the information and then you make a decision, you know? It's in that processing stage when you can consider crazy fucking things. And I, you know, I'm good at this. I'm good at considering crazy fucking things. And I will say the crazy things. Like when we're at the brainstorming meeting, I will say a bunch of crazy fucking things. Um, Not meaning crazy like nonsensical, but crazy like, what do you mean? Of course we can't do that. And those are the areas that need probing often, you know? Because yeah, sometimes, you know, they're right. Sometimes they're wrong, you know, sometimes they're wrong because they haven't considered the fact that they could be wrong, you know? This is something all people fucking do, you know? And I th- I'll probably do like a whole show about this concept because I'm going to conclude this part right here. But the concept is, it's not about just having the information. Information does not lead to good decisions. It's part of the c- process. Knowledge and experience in the analysis phase are fucking crucial. And people often lack lack the knowledge and experience in some subject matter. And then they become extra more defensive that they have the information. Yeah, we know you have the information. Yes, you're smart. You don't have the knowledge and experience in this subject matter to do the necessary analysis. And this is true of all of us in a ton of topics. Again, I'm not some special case. This is a fucking true fucking thing. That bypasses this crucial analysis phase where you can do thought experiments and blow the fucking doors off and think about a lot of things that are unthinkable in a sense. And a lot of times you find truths you would not find otherwise. That's why I'm interested in this sort of shit. <clears throat> Anywho, um, sis- people systematically overlook subtractive change. Don't do that. So now we're on to the third thing, which as I mentioned, the third thing today is the song Just Let Go by Sarah Morris and Michael Koppelman. Um, this has not been released. Um, it's really like a demo. And I might put it on SoundCloud. I don't know. But I'm just kind of teasing it here because I think it's fucking great. And um, I'm going to do like last time and just kind of let Logic play the song and let the words scroll by. And we'll see you on the back end. <laughs> Shadows ain't your style, yeah, I think 
So that was Sarah Morris playing the guitar and singing. That was me doing the other things. And um, I just want to say about the concept of this song, which kind of tie things together here. But what I love about the concept of just let go of what's holding you down is the notion that you, you have lift already intrinsically. You're meant to fly. You're holding yourself down. It's letting go. It's taking away those things that are holding you down that reveal your true nature. You can fucking fly, you know? And um, where I love what, where Sarah took this song is um, to this watching a friend do that and how awesome it is to watch someone let go and start to fly. And like she has a line in there, you know, watching, waiting, cheering you on. Um, so like, Songs that give advice are kind of what can be annoying. I, I try to change them to be about me instead of about you when it comes to like advice songs. This is a you song. And um, I think she brilliantly makes it seem really cool that we're giving them advice. We barely are. Just let go. That's all. It's all of the advice encapsulated in that song. Okay, you guys. Whatever this show is called, this is the end of it. Three things crossed off the list. Three more things coming next time. This is Michael Koppelman. Peace. Peace.